traders, to my YouTube followers, this is a special webinar, something, we, something you will see very often in our room, which is where I'll come on, I'll pick a certain amount of pairs and do it. So if you see it, count yourself lucky. This is one of our internal stuff that we do. Depending on how much is in it, I'll decide whether to publish it. So let's go. I was just looking through some charts and we're gonna do all the yen pairs, guys. So I wanna start with the, the, the CAD yen because I'm on the CAD yen and I was just noticing something. And we do this pretty often, so you guys know. This is what we have. We have a sharp move down. And I don't know whether this is, was what was in the past, but what I know is that if this was in some way ending a structure, this would be an impulse up, right? If this was ending some kind of a structure here from a move that was coming like this, this would go up. So it's not going up, which means we're starting a structure to the downside, right? That just confirmed that you have a one, two, three, and you're going up, but this never broke the low. And we know when they don't break the low, there is a chance you can get something like this and you can still get this. Now I can show you a chart where we have that. And I think all of you know that chart where we have that. I will not go to ask you because I don't, I don't really want to put you in that thing, but I've made that forecast on this chart before. Uh, let me see the pound switch. Yes, so this one. When we had this structure a while back, if you look, I'm on the monthly chart, same time frame. We had that structure a while back. You can see the expanding flat in there. And I made this forecast, it was somewhere in here when I made this, or somewhere here, or the break of this, I think. When I made this forecast, that we're gonna go tag this low. And then they made a correction here, and they actually made another kind of a correction here, and then they made a deep one here, and now they're dropping. So the question is, they did break the low. Because, but this is not coming down the way we want it to come, but it did come break the low. The question is, are we starting a move to the upside or not? Let's come back to the Cadian now, which is the one we're dealing with. We will go break this low. We know that for a fact that they will come break this low because you're going down in a corrective structure. So the question is, if you had this move up, which was pretty sharp, I think you can all see that. Then we came down, we made a flat, came down, we made another flat, came down, and we're making something like this going up, right? So two ways you can look at this. Either this is going to drop now and break the low, or we're going to go up a little higher here, make a running flat kind of a pattern here, come here, break the low. Those are the two options we have on this chart right now. So when you go down to the daily, you can see the divergence here. I think we understand what we're looking at. You can see the slowness with which this is going up. If you remember some time back, I posted this chart and I said, I'm expecting this to come break this stop and then fall. And that didn't happen. They actually went sideways. They did come down if you were trying to sell, you would have made money. And then they're starting to do this and you can find that this piece, I don't know where this one went to, but there's a line here. It's probably not showing up on the daily for whatever reasons here. And then they're getting smaller and you can see the squeeze happening here, right? So they're stretching, but they might not break this. If we're gonna break that for a longer term, then what we would like to see is somewhere here, we are starting to get a bigger one like this and then we can go. But what if they start to drop like this? Then we want that trade because that is a very strong possibility in this one, right? Now, what is gonna create that move, the cat or the yen? We don't know. We know the cat, the yen has a big move to the upside, but can it make a smaller drop before it comes? Or is it going to be that this will take off, give us a flag, a correction, not a flag, a daily correction, then take off. It doesn't matter how far this takes off. There's a big move done after that. So in terms of trading short term here, just be careful. You just you can still take trades, but you're aware. As as long as we're coming to this stop, the closer you get there, the more dangerous it becomes. Right? So we'll keep an eye on this. Let's look at the Pong Yen. Right? Very I'll take this off. This one is irrelevant. I think these two, this one is it. I was explaining to you guys something else there when I did that. So let's go back to the weekly here. And we have a similar thing. We have a sharp move here. We have a move up, we have this and we have this. We might at some point go with an expanding flat there. I'm not sure it is, but that's a, that's a very high probability because this came down really sharp and it stopped here again. Are we making some kind of a running flat here for one more down? Right? Very possible because you do have some big corrections in the middle here, right? In this piece, you've got a move down, you've got a big correction in here got another move down and you've got this weird one that we couldn't figure out what the hell it was doing 
And we're kind of doing a similar weird one that might come back to that level and drop. Right? Because we broke this structure already. We broke out of the structure. So they might break this top. There's a likelihood that they'll break that top. And if they break that top, the cardinal will continue. So there is possibly if we get a pullback, and I mean a daily pullback, you could look for this trade. Right? Something like this. Maybe a smaller one. You could look, look for this trade to continue there. And then that drop. That would give us a perfect running flat pattern because I think we broke the low. In all of them, we broke the low. I don't think this is the start of a big up move because you're not expecting the structure to end like that. So this is the second one we have that are looking very similar. So I'm looking at those two. And those two are like my key. One second, I forget to close the door. Sorry about that. That's part of working at home. Let me take all of these out and let's go. So I'll take this out also. That one is an old one. That was a cell setup from the top there coming. And I'll take this out. This is on the one hour. That was a small buy in the one hour. So we've got these two structures that are showing us some sign that even if they go some more, we're going to go down. So we can trade slowly up and then we'll be aware of is the down move coming. But it, it very much looks like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all the other yen pairs to see whether we have similar structure. Those two are the only ones I've seen it done. Let's see in the euro yen. And we are in the weekly in the euro yen. And we're pretty much in a similar similar situation. We have got this sharp move down. We've got that sharp move up. We've got a sharp move up here. This might be the most corrective of them. I could see this possibility here, back to this level, and then down. I think this one is pretty clear. You could get something like this and down. So what they're telling us all is that we have to have a move that is an equivalent. And I think we should measure that so we will know whether the yen is a driving factor or not. We should have a move that should go about, uh, this is 999 pips. I think that should be from here, yes, 27 to about 40. That should be about 900 something pips. Uh, yep, we can check it. We will go back and check that, see if it's 900 or 9,000. I think it's 900 pips you're counting, right? To there to this level. 39, yes, 27 to 39. Yeah, that's about close to about, that should be more than 1,000 then. So it's breaking this stop. We'll come to the exact amount later on. It's breaking this stop, somewhere above breaking this stop, and then go, right? So that's that's a long term. The short term is we'll have to have some kind of, and remember, we're looking for a short term pullback here before we get in the trade, some kind of a consolidation. And I think we're looking at this one, this one, and one more down to give us that running flat long term, and then that upside. So once that is confirmed, we can start trading this on a longer term, like this piece, a longer term up, something like this we're looking for. We had one, but we don't have a complete pattern. If you look at it, you can see. Let me just bring this back. We've got this, and we've got this. So at some point here, we'll, we can trade shorter, but at some point you might get this. And then that will confirm this up move. So if we get any pullback within this week or next week, that would confirm the longer term move to the upside. So if you're buying short term here, just be aware of that. The possibility of them making one more drop, at least for a week or two. So we'll go to the daily and you can see that. This piece also is telling us that this sharp move can be of its own. Even if you put that, then give us a shorter pullback and then we can buy. So it's upside with the possibility that this can come. But on the bigger picture, you can see that there is one more little piece up and then we're gonna get big move to the downside. So the big move to the downside is on all of them. Whether all of them will do that shorter piece up or not, at least three has it. We'll put them on top of each other at the end of the um, at the end of this session. Let's see, uh, New Zealand yen. Let's go to the weekly and see what we have. This is what we have. This has made a one move down. We have had a one, two, three up like all of them. We've got a move down. And we've got this piece here. So either we look at this as the one sharp move and we can assume that this at some point could come back here, right? That could come back here, break even break this low. Or we decide that this is one piece of its own. We are going to retest this top and then come back, right? We are going to retest the top and then come back. I don't think we're going to go retest that top, but I can see this going a little more and this might become a running flat. We can literally look at this as a running flat in here. 
you'd have to check back to see whether it's this piece or that piece with a sharp move one, two, three here, a sharp move up, and we're actually making a sharp move up. After which this could give us this move to the downside. So this might not have quite a lot more to the upside. Let's say in the daily. With daily, and they all have daily divergence in them, right? So we were looking for this piece to break down. I think we we're looking for some kind of a pattern in here. I can't remember that would be in a lower time frame. This would be in a much lower time frame and take it out for now. We're going up with divergence in play here. That is internal on this last stretch to the upside. So we would look at that in the lower time frame. I think we already have a running flat here, this running flat. Remember this running flat, this one, the correction here, and that one. Remember, I just showed you one of them on the higher time frame where we have this and we have this, but we don't have this as yet, right? So this is the pattern I'm looking for. You can see all of this as a consolidation, no big deal, and we're going up. So this might still go. If we get flags, we buy, especially if you get a four hour flag, one hour flags, you buy. Remember there's divergence and you probably will see divergence in four hour. You can see the four hour. This is in the daily piece going up four hour divergence. I think you would have one. Oh, I see why that, I see why I was looking for now. We're looking for this one. So that, that arrow was for this one, right? If this happens, we can buy, right? If we get that to there tomorrow, we will buy. And then we will see how much more they go before they come. But on the bigger picture, you're having a similar structure a very, very, very similar structure of where this can become a running flat and more down. Let's see the Aussie yen. Oh, sorry. Oh boy, this one is very similar. This one is very, it's almost the same as the, the New Zealand yen. We didn't break the top, we didn't break the low. So. The question in this piece here, this is slightly different, is whether this is gonna become a running flat and we come back here, that's one option. Or the second option is we already, I don't think this one is part of a running flat. I don't think, I think it's a flat of its own. Or we already complete this structure. This might be a flat of its own. We complete this structure and we're trying to go up. So at some point you'll get a consolidation. If we're trying to go back to this stop, right? We're not making an impulse to the upside. Remember this is the consolidation. This one is going slow. So one option is they come back slowly, break the low, which we would have to do. This comes back slowly, break the low here, comes break the low, or we make a bigger correction. And a bigger correction, I mean something like this. This starts to slow down, make a bigger correction here and then go, right? Which of those two options? If everything is showing us a down move, then it is likely that you get this as a running flat with a down move in play. That is much more likely to happen. Let's go on the daily and look at it. The daily, we have divergence. Let's see in the four hour. Yep, I think even in this piece here, we're looking at divergence right now. Right? If you look at this, the last piece up, there's a lot of divergence there. And this this one has divergence, we know that. We're getting divergence in here. And I think at the, at the last two, this last two here, you're also getting divergence. So what we need is divergence in here in the 60. I don't think we have that as yet. Not as yet, it could still go higher, which means we can buy. We are buying the, the Aussie yen. There's no question about whether we are buying the Aussie yen. You're buying the Aussie yen, wait for a correction. You buy, if it starts to reverse, we start to look for sell setups because this one on the weekly, it, it's a bigger move than the previous one. Right? This is already, well, not much bigger, but it is a bigger move than this. If we're thinking that this, and this would make a running flat, then it is bigger. Or we start getting some kind of a deeper correction here before we go. One of those two options are gonna come up very soon. So all buys now has to be short term. You buy, you take profit, you buy, you take profit, right? Because if the yen is proving that there is a big move down coming, not necessarily in the yen dollar itself, because there could be still up move. It could be all the other pairs are moving like that. And the yen just stays where it is, or the yen goes on one small more move. So we've covered that one. Let's see which else is giving us. But the Pong yen and the Euro yen are the, and the Kai yen are the two players of it. So we've got the New Zealand, Aussie, Pong, Euro yen, uh, Kai yen. What about the Swiss yen? Let's see that one. 
and put this in a weekly. I think this is the clearest picture of downside. This one is showing you the clearest picture of downside, right? Just in case, I think you've had a lot more like that to look at, but this is a clearer picture. This is an up move. That's one sharp up move to this level, that sharp move up, down, and this is going back up. We would likely break that up. I think we would definitely break that up. We'll definitely break this top here. And then once the top is broken, we have divergence here. We're getting divergence internally here. We should start to look for the downside, right? If it is a simple three wave structure, if it becomes more complex than what they would do is when they break this top, they'll come back to this level. If the structure becomes more complex, they're gonna come back to this level and go back up again, All right? We'll have more of a flat pattern in here. That is if it becomes a complex structure. If it's not such a complex structure, they can just break the top and start dropping to break this low. And not only, well, this is the low we are expecting them to break. Even if it is gonna go back up here is a good idea of that pattern. This one is a simpler one, right? You see this one, two, three, drop back to complete this. So we have got this here, that is the first wave. Let me go step by step. We have got this one down. We've got this one down. One, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. I don't think we'll come back to the top here. We can go higher, but I don't think we're coming back to the top. After which you're gonna get this one down, right? So when once this come here, I think we're gonna get this. So we can buy here, buy until it stops, which is a little more up. You're actually getting a buy set up here already. Well, you had one, it's gone already. We had a buy set up here. You might even take this as a running flat. I think that would be a running flat. All right? So we're getting divergence here also. So just be careful. We might get some more down move if you get a pullback or if they break the top and then start a drop, we look for sell setups. If that becomes a bigger correction, no problem. You still get very good sales. So this confirming long-term, all of them downside. Let's go to the dollar yen. So the dollar yen is telling me there is a very high probability now that this might be what we think it is, right? That might be, uh, even if you do this and you go back up a little, might be a running flat for one more down. And if we break this low, then we're likely gonna go there and come back here. We will still be within the weekly structure. We will still be within this weekly structure. If we, if we come down here and break this low, go back up there and come back and break the low, we'll still be within the weekly structure to come back here. So, we could see a number of up and down more in this level before we go. And that is why we should watch it very clearly for this one. What's happening here now? This is very, very important. If they start to drop, we want the sell. I think we should still look for the sell as a, as a flat. Even though they come here, we should look for this sell as a flat. First as a flat, and then with the possibility of breaking the low. And then if there's a flat, it will go back up. We'll get out somewhere here. You'll move your stops and get out. If it is going down, we'll, the stop should stay, should be intact and it should go down. You get stopped out, you re-enter again. When they break this low, we look for buys. These are gonna be short-term trades up and down. So based on that, on the long-term, there is some very, let's say you're trading 960 pips. Thanks, Johan, I just uh, saw you post that. So even if, even if you're not doing so good now and you practice on these short-term trades now, that is why I want all of you to trading room, practicing to take these trades. Even if you get end up with, if you take a hundred trades from now until that big impulse, that big trend starts and you make, I don't know, 90 break even trades and 10 losing trades. Let me, put, let me go with the worst case scenario that could ever happen to you for the next two, three months. And then that move starts. You're trained enough to start making money in that because trending moves will not give you break even. Trending moves, once you once they break out of a structure and you put it to break even, 
the impulses are two, three times the previous impulse, the bigger. They move away from the zone really fast. If you're one to one enter, you will get four, five, six to one. So if you put it to break even, you will never be taken out. Check all the trends. And these trends are sharp. That's why I'm showing you them. They're really, really sharp. So once you can get that to break even in a trending mode, you would just add to that trade and add to that trade and add to that trade. Every time it goes in a deeper correction, you will be taken out of the trades. But most of them will be in profit. The last two might be in break even or last one break even. But after that, all of them will go. Once they go back into deeper correction, we trade and we know. We know the direction, the bigger direction. You may either wait a month or so or trade sideways a month and then go again. Because the deeper correction in a weekly chart would be about a month, a month and a half, maybe even two months. But they're tradable structures. And that's what we're trading our trade. We're trading in this. Guys, this is a four-hour correction. We're trading in this. And you're not losing your account. So get into the trade room. Be active. Train yourself. And let's get these trades. Because if this starts to drop, we want the trade. See? All right? Uh, let me stop the recording. It's a bit too long. How much minutes? I don't know. Stop recording.